Hey everybody, how are you? Um, hope all is well. I'm trying to find my Zoom. Give me one sec. For some reason, I lost me on Zoom, but I know I'm on it. Just give me one sec. There we go. Okay, all right. Welcome to day five of our five day sugar detox boot camp challenge. Um, we're here. We made it. I can't believe it. How are you feeling? Um, I know some of you guys are watching recorded, some of you are watching live, and I just want to know how it went. Um, comment below, whether you're watching recorded or live, what you learned about yourself this week and what things, what struggles you broke through and how you've grown. So what you've learned about yourself this week, if you had any struggles that you broke through, that you've really grown through, I want to know how that went. So share with me, um, in the comments, how it went. So welcome again. Um, my name is Cynthia Ray. I'm a registered dietitian and I'm a fitness specialist and a licensed dietitian. Um, I've been in private practice for about 25 years now, mainly focusing on helping women with weight loss and helping heal their relate their negative relationship with food, especially for those women who have been um, dieting over the past and really are done with it and have been struggling and just never really got the answer they wanted for their weight loss problem. So I am here to provide you with some solutions, especially for women over 40. Um, I myself am 47 and um, I'm learning how to embrace this time in my life. So I'm happy to help you do that as well. And to not just grow old, but grow old well, to be the best version of me and the best help you to be the best version of you that you can be. So um, why not, right? We can do that, why not do it? So I'm here to help you do that. So in today's uh, class, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit more about um, how to break the cycle forever. So today will kind of be a overall overview of the things that we've talked about throughout the week, plus a couple of little extra new tips that you're going to get to take away with you. Um, again, this group is designed to be a jumpstart boot camp class. So jumpstart meaning getting you reset, getting you support, getting you education on how to start a sugar detox, um, and then jump in or dive into the 21 day sugar detox, the full sugar detox. Um, I'm planning on starting that on Monday. Let me know if you're interested in joining. It's in a private Facebook group. We're going to go through my book, the 21 day sugar detox together. Um, it's a book that's set up. So it's day to day. So you start day one, you read the information, kind of like a devotional style book or like a workbook and um, read the scripture, go over the material, the education, and then some homework to implement, kind of like we do here um, at the end of each day so you can grow in your progress. The other amazing thing that is within that book and within that course, the 21 Day Sugar Detox, is a full meal plan. It's a full 28-day meal plan. Actually, I think it might be a little bit longer. 28-day meal plan. And it's a paleo style meal plan. And all of the women in my test group, all the women who've done this program absolutely love the meal plan because of how easy it is to follow, how tasty the food is. And um, there's repeated meals in it. So you don't have to buy a ton of the same food or spend all of your time prepping food. Um, there's repetition in it. So essentially, for example, um, for dinner, you might have a chicken dish and then you make two servings of that dish that night. And then the next day you have that other serving for lunch the next day. So you don't have to keep prepping food. Um, it's lovely. I really love the way it turned out. And I really hope that you can enjoy that as well. So if you join me in the 21 day sugar detox book support group, we're going to start that on Monday, this coming Monday, um, September, I'm going to give you the date specifically. I believe it is, I don't want to say it wrong. Monday, September 4th. There we go. I was thinking the 4th. So Monday, September 4th, we'll be starting that. And then following that, or whenever, if you'd like to just skip the 21 days altogether and feel like you're doing good, um, September 11th, I'm going to be launching the second round of my, on, my newest and awesome <laughs> online course called the Ageless Body Blueprint. And that's designed for women over 40 who have been struggling with weight loss, body fat loss, especially as they age. Um, with joint pain, with blood sugar issues, um, just have been doing all the things they've been doing and nothing's working to move the body fat. So that group is designed specifically for those women and for you, if that's something that you can relate to and something that you really need help breaking through, 
I've done the research, I've got the answers, and I'm ready to help you do that. So that is an eight week course. Um, you can be you're in it for a lifetime. So it's ongoing. It's a lifelong course. We meet um, on Friday or Saturday mornings for community group. I provide special um, education on whatever the topic at hand is for the week. And you, I'm, it's a Q&A session. So you can come in, ask questions. Um, it's a very awesome, <laughs> totally awesome support system. Again, I'm huge on community. I know how much it can help. It increases your success rate of doing any program by 95%. If you're in community, maybe even more um, than doing it on your own. So I highly encourage you, if you're looking for something new, something innovative, something that um, approaches the whole person with grace and with love and understanding and with somebody who's been doing this for a long time and who has um, breaking through my own weight loss plateaus as I age, um, this is the group for you. So I'd love to see you there. Again, it's the Ageless Body Blueprint. Um, if you know somebody who this would be great for, let me know. Feel free to comment in the section comments below. Um, if you're interested in the Ageless Body Blueprint or the 21 Day Sugar Detox, and I will connect with you. I'll, set, I'll reach out to you via messenger and we can set that up. All right. I think that's the main announcements for today. So um, as always, this video or this class is going to be recorded. I know it's live on Facebook right now, so it'll always be housed here in our group. Um, you can come back to it whenever you want. I'm planning on uploading these all to YouTube and then creating a little playlist for all five days. So if you want to go to that, you can. I'm going to post it uh, probably later today or tomorrow into our group. So you have that playlist of all five days of the work of the videos that we've been doing and the classes we've been doing. So um, yesterday we didn't have anybody take a picture of their food, unfortunately, or at least they did and didn't share it with me. So if you did do that yesterday, you took a pic, cleaned out your kitchen and took a picture of the food that you're getting rid of, um, go ahead and do that still. And you still uh, post it and tag me in the post. So I know that you did it and you will get a little special gift, a $5 uh, Starbucks gift card in your email inbox. So let me know. Um, or comment if you need to do that still. So, okay. So yeah. So if you haven't yet, please comment, let me know how you're doing. How are you feeling? We're on day five. This is your fifth full day of detoxing sugar, taking out of your diet, changing up your diet. So it's higher in fat, moderate in protein and lower on the carbohydrate end. And if you have done it too, a little bit of fasting. So pushing off your breakfast a little bit in the morning, waiting till 10 o'clock and then, um, uh, closing your eating window at about 7 PM at night. So let me know how that's going. I really want to hear um, what have your results been? Um, share your testimony. Um, it'll inspire me. It'll inspire other people. And we can congratulate you on doing an amazing job and watching how this works so well for weight loss, but also uh, detoxing sugar. Okay, so let's talk about how to break the sugar addiction cycle for the long term. All right. So long-term, the idea, at least for me, the idea to teach for me to teach you is how to not just break through sugar forever, but to know how to manage it in your life, because it's going to be in the world around us. It's a big part of celebrations. It's a big part of part of bonding and making memories with other people. Um, so I want to make sure that you know how to manage sugar, not necessarily take it out of your life, However, there are some people, which is fine, um, that kind of are more purists about it and just feel like it, they're better off without sugar. Um, and if that's you, that's fine. Go for it. Do what works for you because um, why do anything different, right? <laughs> but if you know that you would rather have a um, healthier relationship with sugar where it's a part of your life for those special occasions, I want to teach you how to do that today. So usually I tell my clients and my group members, um, 80% you know, healthy whole food and then 20% other, um, or you can do 90% healthy whole food and 10% other. So you're not feeling like you're restricting yourself completely, but you're still able to enjoy life, right? It's food is a big part of life. I don't want to take that away from you. Um, it just, like I said, it helps you bond. It helps you connect, helps you, um, just feel more understood by people when you're connecting with it. So, which is fine. Uh, we just need to know how to do that. So I'm going to share that with you today. Okay. So there is something called the sugar cycle, and I'm going to share that with you with my screen here. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so the sugar cycle, can you see it? I don't know why it's not coming up on my end. 
Let me do it again. Let me see if I can find it in here. A ton of stuff here. Here it is. Okay, so the sugar cycle. All right, so what's happening? It's, you know, it says sugar addiction cycle. Like we were talking about before, it definitely does feel addictive. It does uh, change brain chemistry. It does um, affect your uh, gut health or your gut microbiome in a negative way. And it may feel addicting, but it seems like technically, um, according to research, it's not a true addictive substance, um, but it feels that way because of all the other good feelings it provides for us. So um, at the very top here, it says what happens first, of course, you eat sugar, then you like it, you crave it, and it has addictive property. So addictive property, not necessarily addictive substance. Um, you eat sugar. And then when you, after you eat the sugar, of course, your blood sugar levels spike. And like we talked about before, dopamine is, is released in the brain. So you just feel relaxed. You feel good. You feel happy overall. And then there is a mass of insulin that's secreted and drops your blood sugar levels down. So insulin's job is to take circulating uh, sugar and take usher it into your cells for energy. So when you have a lot of sugar coming in, a lot of insulin comes in, sometimes it even overcompensates and um, pushes that blood sugar, that sugar into your cells for energy. But sometimes when there's too much insulin, you would feel sleepy or tired afterwards because it's, it's doing too much more than there is sugar. So many times it's kind of stressful on your body when a lot of sugar comes in and insulin just kind of overreacts and over responds and then puts too much in and you end up feeling um, really sleepy after eating. There's also some other components to that fatigue after eating um, carby foods as well. Sometimes it doesn't have to be carbs. Sometimes it could be some um, protein it has the same effect. Protein also elevates insulin, of course, not as quickly, but sometimes you can feel tired after eating a protein meal. And of course, people talk a lot about tryptophan, uh, that amino acid that, help, that allows you to feel tired, which actually what it's doing, it's actually affecting your gut microbiome, um, which actually makes you feel sleepy as a result of that interaction. So anyway, okay, so blood sugar levels spike, dopamine is released to the brain and then mass insulin is secreted to drop blood sugar levels down. So of course, once blood sugar levels drop, um, you feel really hungry again and maybe uh, kind of shaky, kind of lightheaded, maybe dizzy, just headachey. Um, so you wanna go for something else. So then you're, you go back to, um, let's see, it says blood sugar levels spike, Okay, dopamine is released, mass insulin secreted to drop blood sugar levels down. So the same thing, is this a repeat? Huh, I wonder why this is a repeat, interesting. But anyway, so what happens is you, your blood sugar goes up, then it goes down, then typically this comes in here, um, hunger and cravings come. So this is really bugging me. Yeah, I guess I repeated it. That's. That's strange. Anyway, okay. So, so after your blood sugar levels go down, you're really going to be hungry again. You have hunger and cravings, and then low blood sugar levels cause an increased appetite. So now you're feeling hungry again. Then you eat sugar again, and you crave it, and um, the whole cycle begins. This feels like it's off, but maybe I'll find a better chart for you all. But that's the idea. So um, you also you get an emotional um, brain chemical response to feel better, and then you also are offsetting your blood sugar so that you're it's allowing you to have more cravings. Like we talked about before, it's um, stimulating hunger at the same time because it stimulates ghrelin, ghrelin that hunger uh, hormone in our bodies. Okay. All right, let's get back to this. Okay, so let's talk about some ways to exit this sugar cycle. So one of the things, and it sounds, obvious <laughs> to do is to really set your intention and make a decision to say no, right? That this is not part of my life anymore, or it's a small part of my life, or I'm going to limit this into a compartmentalize it in a part of my life where it makes sense for me. So just knowing in advance that you're not going to eat sugary foods on a regular basis, that you're going to keep it as one special or important area of your life. Um, when you go to it, you're not going to be as tempted. 
Plus, again, if you're keeping um, your diet whole and healthy and balanced, you're going to crave it less anyway. But you definitely will know when those opportunities arise and you're thinking, wow, this is awesome. I'm traveling, I'm out of town, and this dessert is special. It's something amazing. And definitely enjoy that. If you're going to grab something sweet, make sure it's your absolute favorite. For example, um, my family and I like to do a family dessert day. And we'll set aside a day of the week where we enjoy a dessert, a dessert as a family together. And we make sure that it's our absolute favorite. You know, we might go, um, one time we went by Costco and our family likes key lime pie. So we got a key lime pie. Um, sometimes um, we'll go out to ice cream at our favorite spot, or we'll go to a restaurant that has our favorite dessert. So we make it a really special event. We don't just settle. And I wanna encourage you to do that as well. So if you're craving something sweet, don't just settle for grabbing whatever. Um, you're, it's, it's not worth it. <laughs> you're worth more than that. And, um, your moment with something sweet needs to be really enjoyable and not just something that you pass by. So you also want to make sure that you're getting in, um, watching your sauces and drinks. Cause I know a lot of those coffee drinks are really sugary. I'm sure a lot of, you know, that too, but I usually just do, um, some coffee, black coffee or an Americano, um, with some heavy whipping cream or half and half. That's the lowest, um, uh, carbohydrate highest fat source of cream. So I like to do that. Um, and on a special occasion, I'll do like a nitro brew, uh, cold coffee with some uh, vanilla sweet cream on top. So I'm not actually getting sugar in the coffee itself, but just in the sweet cream, which is kind of a fun, special treat. Um, in the afternoon, I like to do that. So just to give you some ideas. Okay. So learn to choose sugar and, uh, sweet treat alternative foods to have with you to grab. So if you are craving something sweet, make sure you have in your house or with you somewhere. Um, you know, we can do the dark chocolate. You can do like strawberries and whipped cream. Uh, a lot of times opting for low glycemic fruit like berries is a really good option. So you wanna um, do something like that. Have those sweet treat alternative foods available. Again, I like to do coffee or tea. I like to do the dark chocolate with peanut butter with no sugar, sugar added peanut butter. Um, nut butter helps a lot too. So um, have those available so you can reach for those when you're really having a sweet craving, but um, don't have your favorite sweet treat around to enjoy, or it's just not the day to eat it. Okay. If you happen to eat something sweet and it feels like it's triggering for you and it just brings you right back into that cycle of a sugar addiction type cycle, um, that maybe it's best for you not to have it. Or if you do have it and you feel like it's triggering you, again, go back to your sweet treat alternatives list and have one of those things to help offset the cravings. Or of course you can do um, the L-glutamine supplement or you can do magnesium. You may be deficient in magnesium. So you can grab some supplements too. Also the glutathione, actually it's the uh, gly glytine is the one that'll help you to rid toxins as well. So you might've seen that on my, um, if you go to my website, it's uh, 21 dayswithoutsugar.com, 21 dayswithoutsugar.com. You can scroll down and you'll find a list of supplements that I suggest for sugar detoxing to make it easier to reduce cravings, but then also to rid the toxins, help your body rid the toxins more readily. So if you go to my website, um, you can find that information there. All right, of course, avoid using sweet treats as a reward or to calm stress and anxiety. Use other techniques, like I said before, such as a 30 minute distraction, um, going away and organizing something, whether it's your purse, your wallet, your car, um, your, your, de your uh, desk, <laughs> organize your desk, all the papers on your desk, organize something on your phone. Just organizing something really helps you to take you out of that emotional part of your brain and brings you into the logic center. Um, so it'll help to reduce and calm you, reduce, and reduce stress and calm your anxiety. So, um, going and doing that, you can even, you know, do some punching, punch some pillows, um, punch the sofa, compressing your hands together oh, when you're feeling really stressed. It really helps. It's amazing. Do it, you know, press and release about six times. You're really going to feel a lot better. Um, and just getting that energy out and acknowledging how you're feeling also, so instead of numbing or ignoring your feelings, if you're feeling upset or angry or anxious or scared or afraid, uh, or just afraid of what's in the unknown right now, really take an opportunity to step back first, acknowledge how you're feeling. You can say, ah, oh, I'm so mad right now. I'm so stressed out. This is so annoying. I don't like the way this feels. 
um, you can do that. Acknowledge those feelings and you don't have to sit with them, but acknowledge them, feel it, release it if you need to. And then you can go back to, you know, some mindful breathing, some relaxation, um, deep breathing, whatever you need to do to move on um, instead of grabbing a sweet treat to calm you down. Okay, if you decide to end up eating something sweet, no matter when it is or where it is, um, always make sure to eat it mindfully. You wanna make it a special occasion. If you go out to a restaurant, that's even better. Put it on a plate, take your time making it if you're making something um, and savor it. Eat it with a fork and knife or spoon, whatever you have, and just savor it and enjoy it. And then wait about 20 minutes after you eat it to decide whether or not you're going to grab some more, because that's around the amount of time that your body will start to settle in and decide whether or not you actually need or want more. And if you want more, that's fine. Grab a little bit more, but still same thing. Eat it mindfully, drinking some water, and then um, yeah, just enjoying it that way. So I hope that helps a lot. Um, we, I always like to practice mindful eating with my groups and I don't, I don't really have time to do that today, but it's just basically when you're eating mindfully, you're sitting with the food, you're really um, experiencing all the senses in your body. When it comes to the food, you're taking a moment to take a look at it, noticing what colors it is. Um, take a moment to smell it, see what it smells like. Take a moment to hear what's going on around you. You know, what do you hear in your environment? Take a moment to take a small bite, grab a little piece, take a small bite and let it melt in your mouth and savor it and see how it feels. And then also think about um, being expressing gratitude for how that food was made, um, whoever had to make the money to purchase it, where it was made, you know, from the field, you know, what's, who took care of the plants, you know, to grow this particular crop, to harvest it, to nurture it, and to bring it somehow to your home, onto your plate. So also having mindfulness around gratitude about the food that you have in front of you. You can also pray and thank God for the food he gave you and this opportunity and then how it would bless your body. So um, just make sure that eat, you're incorporating mindful eating into your daily practice. You don't have to eat that slowly all the time, but it is really nice, a nice way to start out a meal. All right, if you are experiencing some emotional needs, you're having some emotional needs and you're really not sure what to do with it, I just wanted to give you a few tips on how to handle um, emotional eating. I know I talked about this before a little bit last time, but I just wanna give an overview. So one of the things you can do is to meet your emotional needs without food is to reach out to a friend for accountability, comfort, or reassurance. So just connecting with somebody, knowing that somebody understands you is so healing and so helpful itself. So if you can do that, that'd be awesome. Another thing you can do is you can grab a journal, a glass of water or some hot tea and just sit. You know, if you, if you still need to acknowledge your feelings of anger and boredom or frustration or overwhelm or what have you, acknowledge that first, take care of that, release any of that negative energy that you have, and then grab a journal, grab a glass of water or hot tea, look inside yourself and see what you need more of in your life. Um, that food, unfortunately, will never fill. So just keep an eye out um, for those opportunities because we know that there's some things in our hearts that food just won't fill. Food was designed to energize our bodies, um, give us nutrients, but never designed to comfort emotional needs, at least long-term, right? Um, you can even, one of the things I like to do, uh, recommend too, is reciting scripture. Um, one of the scriptures that really speaks to me in these moments is knowing that other people are on this journey with you. And this particular scripture is Hebrews 12, one through three. And it's just, it really helps you to get rid of any burdens. It helps you to keep your eyes focused on what's important to you. Remembering why you've decided to eliminate sugar from your life and any of the negative implications that it might have. So um, this particular scripture is, uh, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith for the joy set before him. He endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary, weary and lose heart. So I love how it talks about, first of all, throwing off your burden right? We talked about acknowledging your stress, throwing off your burden. 
And then keep your eyes focused on why this is important to you. And know that we are surrounded by a group of people who are experiencing the same thing, that you're not alone. And when you connect with others, and if you want to continue in the 21 day sugar detox group next, we'll have an opportunity to do that even more. And just know that with, when you're supported by other people, it's much more easy or simpler to throw off the burdens and support each other and just keep running your race, keep doing your thing, stay in your lane. Don't compare your progress to other people, but just compare yourself to yourself and see how you're doing and how you've improved and how you can learn from your experience. All right. Another thing you can do, which I've actually saw one time in a a blog or something, they were talking about how research was showing that if you take a hot shower, it actually helps to reduce your cravings, which I thought was fascinating. So that's something um, that you can try. I've tried it before. It actually does work in the shower is where I spend time talking with God and hearing from him. So that definitely helps me. Um, something about the heat and the temperature elevation in your body really helps. So taking a hot shower is nice. Um, intentionally setting time aside each day whether it's getting up early or staying up a little bit later to spend time in prayer and meditation. So purposely setting aside time to have alone time, to have peace time, um, not just like shutting people out, but when you have your quiet time to be proactive about it, it's not just something that you just do and sit around, but you're actually actively connecting um, with yourself, with God, maybe reading scripture, reading um, a book that speaks to you. So taking that time to spend time in prayer or meditation, will really help you to um, reduce cravings. Another thing you can do too is uh, go to bed a little bit early. And instead of having dessert, go to bed early and create a sleep routine that you really look forward to. Maybe it includes grabbing some water, hot tea, sorry, hot herbal tea without caffeine, um, munch on some crunchy veggies to fill you up if you need to. Um, if you feel, if you already have closed your eating window and you're uh, participating in fasting, um, just grab some hot water or some water in hot tea or some hot lemon water that'll help to cleanse out your body. Um, and instead of, instead of eating, maybe doing some deep breathing um, to help you go to sleep. And then when you wake up in the morning, you're going to feel so refreshed, so rejuvenated. And like I said before, um, having a quality of sleep is definitely going to help with cravings, great quality of sleep, and then uh, making more logical, rational decisions about the food that you're eating. So um, what else? Um, yes. Another thing I like to <laughs> to talk about with my clients in the past in private practice was there's this thing called the apple test. Sometimes that doesn't, it doesn't always work, but the apple test basically is um, if you're craving something sweet and you know you're not hungry or you're wanting to eat, but you know you're not hungry, ask yourself, if I only had an apple, would I eat it right now? And if you're not truly hungry, you probably wouldn't, right? So you can just ask yourself that by doing a simple apple test. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not really even wanting an apple, so I must not be that hungry right now. Um, that helps a little bit sometimes too. And then, like I said before, you can organize something. If you're craving something sweet, but you know what to do, just start organizing something and do a about face and walk away. And then, like I said, if you want to come back to it in 30 minutes, you can, and it'll help uh, to kind of calm down the need for a quick sugar fix. All right. So what we've learned, so what we've learned is we've learned how to eat a whole food, low glycemic diet limiting it to one serving of fruit per day. You've learned how to do hard things and live outside of your comfort zone. That's probably one of the biggest ones that's gonna strengthen you. Um, we've also learned common reasons for cravings and why they occur and how to avert them. We've learned how to depend on God when things get hard and he use his wisdom, when um, the wisdom you've learned in this group and overcoming cravings and habits. You've also learned how to identify the top emotional triggers for emotional eating and how to manage them without using food. That's huge. If anything, that's life-changing. That's one of them. Um, also how to manage your hunger by and bringing ghrelin levels down to avoid overeating by eating um, healthy fats. How to release fat by eating whole food and keeping your blood sugars steady and your appetite in check. All right, so what I learned recently um, was that insulin levels or blood sugar and insulin needs to be low in order for your body to access body fat, to, to use that and convert that into energy, breaking it down so that you're using it up. But if your blood sugar is always up and down, it's actually signaling your body to store more body fat. So, um, once you are getting a little bit better or advanced with fasting and having a longer fasting window, um, you're going to find that your insulin levels are going to be low and your body's going to just really reach in and grab out any of that additional body fat that you're storing. 
and use that for energy. It's a really amazing thing, the way our bodies are designed. So just to keep that in mind. Um, also, we learned how food can act as a drug and affect your mood, how levels of brain chemicals can, chemicals can affect your cravings and how to comfort without using food. Um, and then also know that, oh yeah, know that you aren't alone and that we are experiencing a natural hum human response but with God, we can definitely live above it. If you set an intention, you can live above it. Doing it along with God is definitely a way to, to live above it. Um, that the, the way we respond to food, our cravings for carbohydrates, for whatever reason, whatever reason you have a craving for is totally normal. It's a totally normal human response. But when it gets out of control or gets to be too much and starts negatively affecting our health, then that's when we really want to learn how to keep it in check and how to use it when it's most appropriate and how to enjoy it more, more so. All right. So I'm going to close this out, um, by letting you know that if you want to join us for the next 21 days, um, you're going to be able to increase your results even more long-term. You're going to see a significant amount of weight loss. You might have seen some already, um, just this week. So if you have, and you're watching this live or recorded, comment and let me know if you've seen some weight loss this week or what breakthroughs you've had with your sugar detox. Um, we still have a full day today of Friday is the last full day. So finish it out today. Tomorrow's the first day. If you choose to want to grab something sweet tomorrow, make it something special. You don't have to break it tomorrow. You can keep going. The longer you go, the better and um, the more it'll stick. So you're also, um, I have to say too, that just doing these first five days is the hardest part. And you've got that under your belt already. So why don't we just keep the train moving and go for the full 21 days and really get the fullness out of this whole thing. Um, and then being accountable, having accountability group as you do, this is going to be super helpful and, and ensure your success that much more by joining us. Um, of course you can read the book alone, or you can do it with a group of friends, which is helpful too. Um, but those are just some options. Um, in the group, we're going to be, I'm going to be offering a live Q and a session once a week. So we can all get together in my zoom call in my zoom room. And, um, I can answer your questions about how things are going or give you some advice and tips and support each other in the process. What else? Um, yeah, I think those are the main things. So for today's homework, we do have one more homework and I do want to give a special gift away for this one. So if you are considering joining the 21 day sugar detox or doing the ageless body blueprint. So the giveaway for this homework assignment for the raffle is going to be a 25% off of the cost of the tuition essentially for the groups, for one of the two groups, depending, you can choose one of the two that you wanna apply that to. Um, but if you're needing um, help with breaking through body fat plateaus as you age, the Ageless Body Blueprint is a great way to go. If you just want to continue on your sugar detox journey and continue reaping the benefits of that, um, you can do that as well. So again, the 21 Day Sugar Detox group begins on Monday, uh, September 4th. And then Monday, September 11th, I'll be starting the second round of the Ageless Body Blueprint, how to be fit, fabulous, and fierce over 40 um, group on September 11th, Monday, Monday September 11th. So you can apply that 25% off to either of those groups, depending on what you want to do. So, all right. So what your assignment is, is to share what you've learned about yourself this week. You know, I talked about this earlier, but learn, uh, share what you've learned about yourself this week and how it has changed your life. And also I would like to throw in there, um, how you, your health is doing, how you're, if you see any change in your body weight this week and how you're feeling. And um, yeah, so let me know in the comments and I will put you into the raffle for our 25% off prize for either of my courses. And I think that's it. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for um, allowing me to teach you all these great things. It's a passion of mine. And I just love sh researching and sharing and helping women heal their bodies overall. So continue following me in this group and we will continue getting healthy together. Okay. I'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.